All right, we're live. We're live. But uh, let's give it a couple more seconds here. I just want to spread this out. Listening to, I don't know what you're doing. But you're, you're you're here with us. You're, this is Transparency and Merit with Brian and me. I'm Joe. And we're going to talk a little bit about Mark Wallace, a famous ex-porn star. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh... He was known for uh, giving uh, women HIV. Well, well, let's go take a step back. So he was a, a porn guy for like 15, like over 15 years, like 17 years. <clears throat> and for people our age, he's, he's very recognizable because he's in so many movies. <clears throat> and, you know, a lot of typical teenagers back then uh, watched a lot. Times have changed a lot, okay? Um, I don't think porn is as popular now as it used to be. I think I think the minute it was easily accessible, you can get it anywhere, I think it really kind of lost something. But I'm probably wrong. There's probably a bunch of perverts out there telling me what the heck's wrong with me. Anyways, Mark Wallace. Another interesting thing, before we even get into Mark Wallace, is... I have a very, this is very weird for me. I clearly remember his name, W-A-L-L-A-C-E, Wallace. And now it's, uh, according to Wiki, it's always been Wallace with an I. I'm wondering if this is a Mandela effect. And and if so, have I? is it possible that I've spotted the first porn industry Mandela effect? Who knows? I, I haven't heard of any others yet. You have any memories of Mark Wallace? Yes, I do. I mean, I was, uh, you know, as a young man, I did watch porn. And I'll be honest with you, this whole thing has, um, you know, I knew he did what he did, but I was listening to uh, Luke Ford. And... It's gotten me to thinking about the adult film industry and its negative effects. And, uh, you know, this guy was so bad that he faked uh, HIV, uh, you know, an, an HIV test and he infected uh, quite a few women. I, I hear maybe as much as over 30 women with HIV and doing things to be that false and be that selfish uh, with his uh, with his disease it, it makes me think how bad um, you know how, how 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 bad the industry can be and also 
to a degree, uh, sex should be saved for something a little bit more pure, in my opinion. I, 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 I'm coming off with a different perspective on uh, on the industry as a whole because that was a very cruel thing that he did. And and, the, and another one who did it was uh, John Stag. I guess it's John Stagley. Uh, what was his name again? Uh, John um, John Stag Stagliano also, uh, I believe, infected women with uh, with HIV. And uh, you know these are uh, these are really uh, that that was something that's really cruel. And. Um, I certainly can't respect that. Now, John Stagliano has a Twitter. Now, I'm I'm just going to take a, a little bit more of a practical approach to all of this, and it's clear as as day that <clears throat> since its inception, or since the beginning of internet, or not internet, but of uh, the pornographic industry um, rising and becoming part of so many households. Um, you know, this <clears throat> there was there's always been interplay between what's happening socially, politically, and what's happening in, in entertainment, movies, cultural, uh, cultural phenomenons, or new things popping up in in the mainstream culture, and 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 this the whole porn industry as a whole has a has an a, a, a long arm that reaches deep into the culture and I, I i can see it clearly now for what it is and and that it's always been a psychological operation uh there's no doubt in my mind that the porn industry has pushed a lot of strange narratives and it's almost i think the reaction is almost like when people would pick up uh, National Enquirer, and and so they'd see a, a line like um, some something crazy would happen from the porn industry. And go, oh, yep, there there's another one of those crazy porn stories. But <clears throat> the AIDS thing is is interesting mainly because I have some kind of interesting perspectives on on AIDS as a whole. Looking back at it. From, from now the outside looking in. And I, I see the industry having been a major part of keeping the narrative of AIDS alive. And so there was a, been a lot of stories about the former actors and or even you know, at the time maybe current <clears throat> porn actors who get AIDS. And, it, and, and what I see now is that it was all to protect <clears throat> It was all to protect the narrative of AIDS and what it meant to society. And quite frankly, I think it was all uh, nothing more than a major scare tactic. And it worked. It worked. But it worked till it didn't work. And I think that's where people are at now. It's like kind of getting a more kind of crystallized vision of what porn means to them. And uh, I, I, for me, it's easy as, as I, I, I go right back to um, the movie Deep Throat. <clears throat> and we were talking about this earlier. And you know more about the plot of that movie Deep Throat. But one day you should probably, I'm talking to anybody out there, you should probably take a good look at the, narr like the, the narrative and, and the, um, the theme of the movie Deep Throat. And... I don't know so much that the theme of that movie has a clear uh, correlation with the events that went down and unfolded at Watergate, where there was a, an agent, a deep throat, an agent named Deep Throat. And for me, it's I've been thinking on, on this for quite some time, and it always amazes me that I've never seen anybody write about this sort of alignment. Um, of 
porn to politics and mainstream culture and and so they've always been pushing like the, the aids scare the there was the whole um you know wear condo you know suddenly all, all the porn actors had to wear condoms and you know that was a thing for a while in the, in the mainstream press um you always hear about the former porn actress found dead overdosed you know out in lancaster or some weird city and uh yeah, that's another byproduct too of uh, you know just the these strange effects, uh, the, these magically uh, created uh, narratives or storylines of these people who you know nobody. It's it's a strange thing, but it's just it's when I look at it all, I see it for what it is, and the porn industry is nothing more, and it's never been anything more than a psychological operation. Any thoughts there? Well, I, I don't know if I necessarily agree with the psychological operation. I mean, as far as the psychological operation um, of making a profit. Now, um, are you I, kidding I, me with that? Is, is that really your answer? Are you serious? You don't think there's a psychological impact of porn? Get out of here. No, no, no. There certainly is a psychological impact on, on, of porn. But the main reason that porn is around is primarily to make a profit. People are into porn to make a that's profit. Where I, that, that's where I disagree. I disagree full far. Now, now there are producers so and directors that want to make a lot of money and make a good. They they want to make a series. I get that, but overall, they are not the ones who who allow. They're you're not looking high enough. You're looking at at, at the the <laughs> vivid videos and oh yeah, they're trying to make a profit. Of course, they were trying to make a profit. They were. They're, those aren't the people I'm thinking of. I'm talking about the people who allow it. The, the people. How did porn get to where it was? How did it be? Uh, how did it get to a place where you could walk into a, almost any liquor store in LA and get a video during its heyday? Um, I mean, it's just it absolutely goes way beyond making a dollar, in my view. But go, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I cut you off. Well, it's always been about me. I mean, before the pornography industry was uh, was underground, it was, you know, when my father was in the Air Force, uh, he used to show like he, he ran the projector. He would show a movie, and then after that move, after the movie was finished, he would uh, he would you know like I think it was really cheap to see a movie at, in, in the PX, and and then after the movie, he would uh, show a, a porno film for you know. Uh, like three to four dollars it was like something like 50 cents to get into the movies or maybe even a quarter but to watch a porno hey it was a little bit you know it was like it was some some cheddar uh to see that and it was all about making a profit and making money now i have an intimate experience or not not an intimate experience but a, a rather personal experience with the uh, whole hiv and AIDS crisis. My mother worked as a med tech, and uh, she worked with someone who worked in the UCLA labs. And this person said when AIDS, like she was there when AIDS first came about. And they told, so they told people to kind of like keep keep hush up about it. We can't, we can't really say what's, what's going on here. And what that ended up doing, because a lot of people were giving blood and there were a lot of blood, people who got blood transfusions who ended up uh, uh, getting AIDS. One of them was uh, my next door neighbor's uh, uh, son-in-law, who was a World War II vet. The, my neighbor was a World War I veteran, and his son, his son-in-law, uh, got AIDS from a blood transfusion. And uh, they were keeping it mum's the word, which was pretty bad because these people were um, were uh, basically infecting uh, the blood supply, and. Uh, Again, Mark Wallace and, and John Stagliano, 
both, in, I think, infected quite a few number of actresses um, in the adult film industry. And like I said, to me, the industry is about making a profit and it is, um, it's really a distortion uh, of the mind and it, uh, it basically, I think it's, I think it's unhealthy and uh, I don't think it's good. <clears throat> Well, therein lies the problem, and therein, at, from my perspective, um, especially with my background in, in psychotherapy and from what I have witnessed and, and the position I took years ago, um, most people would probably agree with you, but there are some people that I have spoken to who ha have seen it the way I see it, and it's even scarier than the story to me it's it's scarier that it's more of a control mechanism mechanism and it, because porn and the, the the widespread uh nature of porn um in its prime uh it was certainly something that uh crept into many many households in very interesting ways because you know you can get really kind of live sort of vicariously through all you know what you're seeing on the videos and um they've only progressively gotten freakier weirder more extreme more violent more aggressive um what's up mfx uh you know no stuff you know what i mean it's just over time it's grown exponentially filthier and and more shocking when really i, I mean I, I feel there is a, a, a significant, a tremendous impact culturally by what the porn industry has portrayed. And, and I've always seen it as way more of a very kind of um, right in front of your, hidden in plain sight, right in front of your face, uh, this, this program to control people's thoughts on sexuality. America couldn't, it, I, I can't think of a country more repressed uh, in their ideals about sex than here in America. And uh, I think porn had a, a significant role in, in, the, in that. And um, that's, that's just part of my story. And, I, and, and I'm not buying a lot of... Um, the, the AIDS stories either. Uh, I think that the AIDS industry was interwoven with the narrative of AIDS. It was interwoven with the idea of um, a, a, of a, a culture more interested in getting off and uh, and wearing a, a rubber to do it. And and yeah, it's it's pretty significant at this point. And it's probably lost a lot of its effect over time and and when i see an industry push that hard and push the uh what they push now uh so extreme uh it just it, it really does make me reflect on on what in the world it was about from the beginning and i i think i think there there are no mistakes and it goes way beyond money um most of the people at the top of the porn industry have probably more money than, you know, more, a lot of, a ton of money, but, um, I still, I'll, I'll never go back in my thinking th that it was purely for money. Absolutely not. It was, it was to control, uh, uh, just a, a small sliver of cultural magnetism or, or magnitude. Well, I think money is a, a large uh, factor. No, I would not do porn. I no. That answer. Good question, question, though. I, I thought it was a fair question. That's okay, but uh, I, I guess um, and and there's a whole thing about AIDS. I mean, the, the, there's a whole. Oh, I got you a picture of Mark Wallace, by the way. Thought you might like this. Yeah, that's great. 
<laughs> and I remember, you know, one of the things I remember is like he, uh, there was like a dribble of uh, coke. I mean, I think like like a the, the coke dribble down his nose to also be there. But uh, hopefully we don't get dinged for that, you know. Uh, but um, the thing is, Joe, mm-hmm. uh, I kind of. Uh, and there's a whole, like I said, there's a whole, I, I remember when Magic Johnson got HIV and my mother, like, you know, she worked in the medical field and how uh, HIV and AIDS are transmitted. Uh, there was a whole uh, question on that, like how it was transmitted and things like that. So there has been a, uh, uh, both an under, like a, a, an underreporting and overreporting of it. I think on, on on both levels there. I mean, there's an argument that could be made for that. Um, but uh, again, uh, I think that uh, by the 1960s, uh, America has become uh, very degenerate. And it's only gotten uh, it's only gotten worse, in my opinion. Uh, we uh, we seem to um, we seem to put like a George Floyd on a pedestal. Uh, cancel culture is is done by people who are you know who are rather degenerate. And uh, part of me really doesn't want any part of that, you know. And uh, you know whether it, whether it's porn. Uh, whether it's prostitution, strip clubs, it's all degeneracy, and um, I am uh, I'm changing my view. I used to have I, I used to have a libertarian view about uh, about all that stuff, but now I, uh, I I've changed my my tune on that. And the show that Luke Ford did, I just said that one saying that you know about Mark Wallace giving over 30 women or he said I, I think he said like over 30 women HIV and then I read about Mar- uh, uh, Stagliano uh, doing kind of the same thing I, I, I now just kind of think that uh, these things aren't good there's a reason why there were laws against it and uh, uh, you know I just think that uh, I mean for me I want to I, I, I want to be like in, in my older years. I want to be kind of a moral, a more of a moral person. I know I was kind of a dirt bag in the past, but that's not necessarily the way I want to be. And uh, you know, I wouldn't want anyone to hurt me that way. And uh, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm becoming to, to a degree, I think, a different type of uh, thinker and a different type of person. Uh, I don't want to be uh, a degenerate, you know. Anyway, Joe, do you have anything to add before we call the show a day? Because I'm going to get to Betty Bond. And and therein, once again, you helped me prove my point. Um, years of porn, decades of it, really. Um, in this article, it's, it's it, it tries to say that um, that porn generated close to three billion uh, around the time this article was written in 1998, um, basically saying that. The adult business was peaking around that time, which could be true. I would I would say financially it probably was the the heyday there, the late nineties. Um, I don't think it even made it into the in, into the two thousands very far as for, uh, in, in terms of growth. But I could be wrong on that. I'm not sure. But but what you're saying is is very interesting, especially you know considering what I said, and then take a look at, at what you just said you know we you know decades of, of porn pretty much and 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 now you know you kind of reflect on it and you're like ew you know look at me and that probably matches more of society today that are looking at porn going good lord this this stuff's gross like what the hell um what did people ever see in it and that could really create a mind fuck for the 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 generation, I don't know, or generations really, uh, that were way in 
knee knee deep in porn um, during those years. And maybe I'm just kind of waxing philosophically, but I think I th- <laughs> let's see here. Uh, I, I just I, I think that there is a lasting impact of porn. And I do think that, you know, thoughts of, you know, oh, I don't want to be a wretched human being. I don't want to be known as somebody who is, you know, a big porn, you know, in, enthusiast. Um, when, in fact, there's nothing wrong with having been into it. It's just that this is this is another yet another angle uh, from the cryptocracy. Uh, this is all part of the plan to make people feel bad about themselves. Um, it was never about making people feel good about themselves, I, from what I could tell. Um, so I don't know. I, I find it all very, uh, very sus and um, very suspect that the, the porn industry, you know, kind of was like this shite brining star for a while and it's just starting to fade away. It's out of favor. Like, why? Weird, weird, um, just weird and and sad in a way. But yeah, you can't go, you can't look back at 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 it and regret it. That'd be kind of a waste. Um, what is Willie saying here? Mister Midnight Movies' mother worked in the medical field. Oh, happy ending. Don't make a masseuse a doctor. Yeah, that's true. Oh, that, you know, and and, and uh, but but I mean, there are massage parlors all over the place. And I think I, you know, in in, in in the first half, Joe, I disagreed with you. I think porn, since it's so re- readily available, a lot of people are watching it. And uh, there's, you know, right now we've had lockdowns, and uh, people are not going out and being intimate with each other. So I think we're seeing a lot of uh, unhealthy uh, things, and I think male, males are uh, are more. Um, are more uh, prone to uh, to porn addiction and to uh, and to the whole fapping thing and doing that for uh, you know and it's just you know to a degree it's a sign of uh, it can lead to depression and uh, I think suicide has gone up since these uh, since C nineteen and uh, it's just uh, so these are know. heavy heavy psychological impacts, but yet you don't see how it could be a psychological operation from the beginning. You think that's just a coincidental byproduct of the porn industry? I had, you know what, before I, before I made a comment on that, I don't think so. But before I made shameful, Brian, people are shamed. They, They feel shameful for their, for owning for, owning porn videos i've seen it people are i've seen it people are yeah look i mean at at this point i mean look and i'm not even gonna say i'm never gonna look at porn again i i'd like to think i won't you know i want to just try not to look at that stuff anymore and just uh be away from that stuff just because i i think i do believe that it's unhealthy i do believe that it's immoral and uh, you know, look, I uh, I want to treat people the way I want to be treated, and I think, like I said, there's a, there's a lot of things with males out there right now that are going on, and uh, yeah, so Willie Willie's there, to, but I mean, there's a lot of things with males out there that are going on that are really painful, yeah. and uh, a lot of men do not know how to relate. And uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of hurt men out there, and um, yeah, I think we need to have a little bit of compassion for them, and uh, hopefully, uh, they don't have to turn to things like uh, pornography. I mean, it's 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 it's, it's probably I don't know how, how tough of an addiction it is to break, but I think it needs to kind of be broken. I think we need to uh, I think we need to get. Uh, you know, more people thinking about morality and decency. And there we go. There we, there we go with uh, A. Willie saying uh, he wants me to get laid. It's it's kind of annoying to a degree. It's not intelligent. It's just uh, <laughs> Willie, is, Willie is a bit of a degenerate, you know, uh, and I guess he likes that side of himself. And I get a little – I can have fun with it too, but, uh, you know. 
hey, whatever. All right. So anything else? No, that's all. Hey guys, uh, like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. I think uh, I think this is a subject we can talk about. Uh, you know, maybe even revisit again. Uh, there's a whole thing with incels, and uh, there's like I said, right now there's a a lot of a lot of, uh, a lot of <laughs> well, well, <laughs> but you know, there's a lot of things with incels, and there's a lot of things with uh, with men right now, particularly heterosexual males. Uh, a feeling of lon loneliness and isolation, and uh, it's gotten worse over time. And uh, there's a lot of statistics in this, and a lot of things that can perhaps, you know, look. There's no magic pill, but there are things that can improve uh, the life. And I think we'll we'll begin to talk about that as well, Joe. All right, anything else before we call the show a day? Uh, no, go check out our website, and uh, that's it. Transparencymerit.com. That's it. 